Hello students. In today's video, we are going to discuss pharmacology of uh, sulfonylureas and uh, maclitinide analogs. This category of uh, anti-diabetic drugs are used in the treatment of type 2 diabetes mellitus. By now we know that the primary cause of uh, type 2 diabetes mellitus is insulin resistance that is lack of insulin action which means that cells of the body show reduced response to this insulin present in the blood. Another reason could be deficiency of insulin secretion. So either due to reduced insulin action or due to reduced insulin secretion or both. Glucose is not transported from the blood into the body cells and thus levels of glucose in the blood remain high and this is termed as hyperglycemia. Hyperglycemia leads to diabetes mellitus and to understand this concept you can refer to my video on insulin and diabetes mellitus. Now, as we all know, insulin is produced from uh, uh, beta cells of pancreas. Now, sulfonylureas and maglitinide analogs are insulinotropic agents. These drugs stimulate and thus enhance secretion of insulin from pancreatic beta cells. And this improves transportation of glucose from the blood into the body cells. Now, before discussing pharmacology of uh, sulfonylureas and maglitinide analogs, let's quickly look at the classification of anti-diabetic drugs. Uh, look at this chart. Anti-diabetic drugs are broadly classified into three categories. Drugs that enhance insulin secretion, drugs that overcome or control insulin resistance and miscellaneous drugs. Drugs that enhance insulin secretion are further classified as drugs that block ATP sensitive potassium channels. Then GLP-1 receptor agonist that is a glucagon like peptide 1 receptor agonist and DPP-4 inhibitors that is a capillary endothelial enzyme dipeptidyl peptidase 4 inhibitors. Now, uh, in today's video, we are going to discuss pharmacology of drugs that uh, uh, block ATP-sensitive potassium channels and stimulate pancreatic beta cells, thereby enhancing secretion of insulin and are called as insulinotropic agents. Now, increased secretion of insulin improves transportation of glucose from the blood to the body cells. This reduces levels of glucose in the blood and controls diabetes mellitus. Now these drugs that block ATP sensitive potassium channels are of two types. Sulfonylureas and maglitinide or phenylalanine analogs. So let's first discuss pharmacology of sulfonylureas. All sulfonylureas have similar pharmacological properties and these are classified as first generation sulfonylureas and second generation sulfonylureas. Now, tolbutamide is a first generation sulfonylurea. Second generation sulfonylureas include glybenclamide, which is also known as gliburide, then glipizide, glyclazide and glimepiride. Now, second generation sulfonylureas are more potent and clinically superior and thus these are used clinically. Tolbutamide is used infrequently. Let's first study mechanism of action of sulfonylureas. Now, as we all know, insulin is produced by pancreatic beta cells. Now, both sulfonylureas as well as maglitinide analogs stimulate beta cells and increase or enhance insulin secretion and thus both these type of drugs are termed as insulinotropic drugs. So look at this figure. This is a pancreatic beta cell and these are ATP sensitive potassium channels. Now during the resting state, these ATP sensitive potassium channels remain open. 
and potassium ions keep moving out of the cell and thus the cell remains hyperpolarized. Now, sulfonylurea receptors, in short, SUR1, are located on these ATP sensitive potassium channels. Now, sulfonylureas, they bind to these sulfonylurea receptors and block, they cause the blockage of these ATP sensitive potassium channels. So, uh, these channels, they close and thus potassium can no more move out of the cell and therefore potassium ions accumulate inside the cell and this causes depolarization of cell. Now cell depolarization open these uh, voltage sensitive uh, or voltage gated calcium channels so calcium moves inside the cell increased calcium causes exocytosis and thus release insulin from the secretory vesicles. Now increased secretion of insulin improve transport of glucose from the blood into the body cells and this reduces levels of glucose in the blood and controls type 2 diabetes mellitus. So this is how sulfonyl ureas stimulate pancreatic beta cells and increase or enhance the secretion of insulin. Uh, now, very important, sulfonyl ureas increase insulin secretion from pancreatic beta cells regardless of the blood glucose levels. So, let's say type 2 diabetic uh, mellitus patient took the dose of sulfonyl urea and then skipped the meal. Now, skipping the meal causes natural fall in blood glucose. But since the patient has taken sulfonyl urea dose, it will cause increased release of insulin and that can cause increased risk of hypoglycemia, which can be very serious. So, by virtue of insulinotropic action, sulfonyl ureas increase the secretion of insulin. And apart from these insulinotropic action, Sulfonyl ureas also show extra pancreatic effect and by virtue of these extra pancreatic effects, sulfonyl ureas reduce insulin resistance. So they reduce insulin resistance and thus increase sensitivity of peripheral tissues to insulin, especially sensitivity of liver cells to insulin increases. Sulfonyl ureas also inhibit the process of gluconeogenesis and thus reduce synthesis of glucose in the liver from non-carbohydrate sources. Now, reduced synthesis of hepatic glucose or reduced synthesis of glucose in the liver also reduce levels of glucose in the blood. So, this is how sulfonyl ureas primarily by increasing the secretion of insulin and also by their extra pancreatic effect reduce the levels of glucose in the blood and thereby control type 2 diabetes mellitus. However, as already discussed, sulfonyl ureas are associated with the risk of hypoglycemia. Uh, now, let's see to the pharmacokinetics of sulfonyl ureas in brief. All sulfonyl ureas are well absorbed orally. These are 90% or more than 90% bound to plasma proteins and therefore they exhibit low volume of distribution. These are metabolized in the liver and may produce active or inactive metabolites. These metabolites are excreted primarily in the urine and thus these drugs should be cautiously uh, given to the patients uh, with liver and kidney dysfunction. Now, indications or uses of uh, sulfonyl ureas, these are used in the treatment of type 2 diabetes mellitus, generally in combination with other anti-diabetic drugs as per the discretion of the physician. Then, adverse effects of sulfonyl ureas, hypoglycemia is a common adverse effect, sometimes it can be severe or uh, and rarely it can be fatal. Now, let us understand uh, the drugs or the factors that can precipitate the incidence of hypoglycemia or increase the chances of hypoglycemia. Now, as the plasma protein binding 
of uh, sulfonyl ureas is 90 percent or more than that simultaneous administration of uh, drugs like uh, phenyl butazone sulfenpyrazone salicylate etc can displace sulfonyl ureas from their protein binding sites now this will increase concentration of free or active sulfonyl ureas in the blood and that can precipitate or increase the incidence of hypoglycemia then simultaneous administration of drugs like uh, ketoconazole sulfonamides simetidine etc can inhibit can inhibit metabolism or excretion of sulfonyl ureas now due to reduced metabolism or due to uh, reduced excretion uh, these drugs that is sulfonyl ureas they will accumulate in the body and again that will increase the risk of hypoglycemia other factors that can cause hypoglycemia include skipping a meal as already we have discussed then unusual strenuous physical activity then overdose of sulfonyl ureas or liver and kidney dysfunction these can also cause uh, hypoglycemic uh, incidence uh, weight gain is another important adverse effect of sulfonyl ureas sulfonyl ureas can also cause allergic skin reactions like rashes photosensitivity purpura etc now let's see to uh, some important contraindications of sulfonyl ureas now beta blockers beta blockers should not be prescribed with sulfonyl ureas now as we all know as we have already understood by now sulfonyl ureas can cause hypoglycemia now one of the uh, main warning signs of hypoglycemia is the tachycardia that is the increased heart rate now beta blockers for example propranolol uh, these drugs block beta 1 receptors on the heart this causes slowing of the heart rate and thus they prevent occurrence of tachycardia so the warning sign of hypoglycemia is missed so simultaneous administration of uh, beta blockers along with the sulfonyl ureas or mag maglitinide analog will mask or will hide the warning signs of uh, uh, hypoglycemia like for example tachycardia so beta blockers should not be administered with sulfonyl ureas or with the meglitinide analogs then sulfonyl ureas should not be precipitated in patients with severe cardiovascular comorbidity then liver or kidney failure uh, and uh, they should also uh, not uh, prescribed in patients hypersensitive to sulfonamides and also in uh, type 1 diabetes mellitus or diabetic ketoacidosis and further they should not be prescribed even during pregnancy and lactation so this is in brief on pharmacology of sulfonyl ureas uh, now let's discuss pharmacology of uh, meglitinide analogs now this class includes two drugs repaglinide and netiglinide now these are also insulinotropic agents they also exhibit insulinotropic action and therefore they stimulate pancreatic beta cells to enhance the secretion of insulin to increase the release of insulin now both repaglinide as well as netiglinide are structurally different from uh, sulfonyl ureas but they act similar to sulfonyl ureas like sulfonyl ureas these drugs also block atp sensitive potassium channels on the pancreatic beta cells blocking these channels they cause uh, cell depolarization influx of calcium and exocytosis of insulin from the beta cells so they enhance secretion of insulin from pancreatic beta cells now like sulfonyl ureas meglitinide Analogs also increase insulin secretion regardless of the blood glucose levels. So, after taking a dose of repaglinide or netiglinide, uh, the meal should not be skipped. Otherwise, it can cause hypoglycemia. So, these drugs are also associated with the risk of hypoglycemia. Uh, look at this table. Uh, 
It shows distinctive characteristic features of repaglenide and netiglenide. Unlike second generation sulfonyl ureas, both these drugs, they have a, a shorter half-life uh, and therefore they have a short duration of action. Now, plasma half-life of repaglenide is less than or equal to 1 hour, its duration of action is 3 to 5 hours. Similarly, plasma half-life of netiglinide is 1 and half hour and its duration of action is also only 2 to 4 hours. So unlike second generation sulfonyl ureas which are effective for more than 12 hours, both these drugs are effective for short periods of time. Now in addition to this, these drugs are uh, quickly absorbed, uh, these are rapidly metabolized and uh, they show fast onset of action and thus they are fast acting and uh, induce these drugs induce short lasting insulin release so as they have a shorter duration of action they induce short lasting insulin release now one very important characteristic feature of these drugs is this that uh, since they have a shorter duration of action they control postprandial that is after meals rise in the blood glucose levels and therefore these drugs both these drugs are administered uh, before each major meal and uh, that's because of this reason they are administered three to four times daily as per the requirement always before a major meal as a control post prandial after meal rise in the blood glucose levels so these are to be taken before breakfast lunch, dinner. Uh, now let's see to the uh, side effects. Now as already discussed, these drugs also possess risk of uh, hypoglycemia. They will stimulate insulin release even if blood glucose levels are low. And these drugs also cause weight gain. Now in addition to this, repaglenide can cause side effects like uh, mild headache, then uh, dyspepsia that is indigestion, then uh, arthralgia means joint pain and weight gain. Then netiglinite can cause side effects like dizziness, then uh, nausea, uh, flu-like symptoms and joint pain. Now talking about the indications, repaglinite and netiglinite are used in the treatment of uh, type 2 diabetes mellitus along with other anti-diabetic drugs as already discussed. Uh, these are primarily used uh, to control postprandial rise in the blood glucose levels. Like uh, sulfonylureas, uh, maglitinide analogs are also contraindicated in type 1 diabetes or in uh, diabetic ketoacidosis and they should also uh, not used during pregnancy and lactation. So this is in brief, uh, a brief information on pharmacology of sulfonylureas and maglitinide analogs. Please note, information provided in this video is only for academic informative purpose. For clinical use of these drugs or for the treatment of type 2 diabetes mellitus, consult your physician. Do not self-medicate yourself. If you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.